See this mask right here? I'm gonna give it away. Watch this video to find out how. What up world? This is The Goal Net recording live here from outside of Chicago. Today's video is gonna be a deep dive comparing the mask on the left with the chrome cage and the straight bars, the Bauer 940, to the top of the line mask on the right with the white cat eye cage, which is the Bauer 960. So hopefully today's video is really interesting to everybody watching along. Normally I compare last year's model pro gear to this year's model pro gear or the two different product families within a given brand, you know, like how the Hyperlight differs from the ultrasonic line. I get a ton of people asking me about senior level gear or second, third price point level gear. And unfortunately I don't really have much experience testing that, but I know there's a huge demand in the market for it and hockey equipment's expensive. So I don't blame anybody for wanting to get the best gear they can and sticking within their budget. And one of the reasons I think masks are particularly interesting is because I'm a huge advocate of helmet safety. If you remember my Instagram profile a couple of years ago, I had vote helmet safety in 2020 and was really trying to raise awareness. And there's been no shortage of times I've had the opportunity to post pictures of pros with ill-fitting masks or weird strapping systems that may take away from, you know, the full intended safety of that mask. And the reason I do that is to try and raise awareness to it. So if you're somebody at home that doesn't get paid to play pro hockey for a living and doesn't need to try and get every single advantage they can, you take a minute, look at yourself in the mirror, see if your mask fits correctly. And if there's any questions, hopefully you're in a position you could go visit your local hockey shop, get some guidance and get that mask, um, you know, fitted for you properly or get a new mask if that's what it comes to be. Another really interesting debate is who makes the best mask. If you follow me at all, you've noticed that I will always do a deep dive talking about what a new mask is, but I don't ever actually review masks. And the reason that I don't do that is because mask safety, again, as I said, is something I take very seriously. And unless I had the budget and the resources and the special testing apparatus to do independent safety testing on every mask, I would tell you the best mask is the one that is the safest in independent testing and it fits you the best. Unfortunately, the independent testing doesn't exist. So it somewhat comes down to what fits you, what you can afford and what you're comfortable wearing. If say there's two options at the same price point, which very much there are now with the Bauer mask, a CCM mask, Warriors at retail, we have sport mask. And then there's no shortage of direct to consumer brands like Mass Marvel, um, Otney, trying to think coveted. And by no means am I endorsing any of these brands, just listing some of the ones that I'm familiar with. The other great thing about this video, I'm going to give away the 940 mask. So check this video out. If you don't already follow me, follow me. And if you're interested in winning this mask, please leave a comment below that says, I want to win this mask. And I will pick a follower at random and I will send you this Bauer 940 mask, which has never been used, free of charge, and it is yours to own. Unfortunately, I won't be sending it to Europe or if I pick a European when I say free of charge, maybe we can work something out with shipping. But if you're in North America, the mask on the left, right there with the chrome cage. I will give this away to somebody for just taking the time to watch this video, learn a little bit and educate yourself on helmet safety. So first things first, what are the differences between these masks? The mask on the right with the white cage is the Bauer 960. This is the most popular mask in the history of all goalie masks and basically Almost every small brand out there has a carbon copy of the Bauer 960. I hate it. I wish people would stop and design their own products and try and progress helmet safety, mask aesthetics, mask design. It doesn't happen. Everybody rips off the 960. It is the default standard goalie mask, in my opinion, in professional hockey in the world. And when we get down to cost, the Bauer 960 in Canadian terms looks like it's about uh, $1,000 and retails for $950 in the US. The mask on the left is what Bauer calls uh, the 940 mask, and that retails Canadian for $499. And in the US, 
that mask retails for a little bit less with the exchange rate. That mask retails for $3.99. So for the easy sake of discussion today and not getting too specific, what am I getting for double my money? I could buy two Bauer 940s for the cost of one Bauer 960. So what's the difference is, is it worth more for me to pay more? Let's figure it out. All right, so these masks actually fit differently. So the first thing we should point out in terms of the differences with these masks is actually the fit. The 940 actually is the replacement for the Bauer Enemy 9 or XI, or excuse me, IX. And so it fits like an enemy. If you're not aware, the reason Bauer has two different lines of masks, aside maybe some from some design philosophy differences, is more to fit more head shapes. So the mask on the left is going to come in fit one, two, and three. The mask on the right is going to come in uh, small, medium, and large, basically. So two different fits. The 940 and the NME line will fit sort of a wider, more round head. And the uh, Bauer profile fit, as we call it, but the 950 and the 960, they will fit a little bit more of a sort of taller, narrow face. I wear a fit two in the NME line, so I'd wear a fit two in the um, 940 here, and in the 960, I'm in a medium, and I'm right between a medium and a large, and every mask I try on, I think by size chart, I'm probably a large uh, fit three, and it's just too wide for my face. If I were to go to a proper fitting, I think I would definitely get fit into the profile fit within Bauer. So if you want the profile fit, but you're on a budget, I would look at the Bauer 950 mask, which is not pictured here. Price point wise, that's right between the 940 and the 960, um, but still, you know, more affordable mask than the 960. So again, first things first, when we talk about masks and we talk about safety, it really comes down to fit. These masks fit differently. So that's one big difference. And you can actually kind of see that looking at the masks here. You can see the much wider chin area and much more exaggerated there um, on the 940 versus the 960 is very thin and sort of jaunt there at the chin. And then aesthetically, the other main difference is if we look at that top ridge, you can see it's sort of flat, um, you know, all of those three ridges on the top versus on the 960, they are very narrow. Uh, I'd say they protrude more off of sort of the base area of the shell um, and they might even be tall. Another really subtle difference as well is in the air, ear hole area on the 940, you can see there's a very subtle um, raised area there. You can just sort of see the shadow right between the ear holes there versus on the 960, it's completely smooth in that area between the ear holes as well. So that is extremely subtle. But at a high level, the masks do have some subtle tweaks between the chin and the forehead area. And a lot of that stems from the 940 being designed to fit different heads. So it has to have a different shell shape, which means there's going to be some differences in the aesthetics of the mask. Let's dive into the tech a bit more. So when it comes to construction of the masks, the 940 falls into the performance level category, which is effectively Bauer's second price point range, which includes the 940 and the 950. The 960 falls into Bauer's elite level category or top price point or pro level, which includes the Bauer 960 pictured here, uh, currently the NME VTX, and the NME VTX will be replaced this spring or this summer by the NME 1, which is the mask with the square or diamond-shaped holes that Vassy's currently wearing. But all of the masks uh, I just referenced in the elite category and the performance level category all have at least a minimum of a 100% full fiberglass shell. And then there's some nuances after that between the constructions. So this is where we start to get into what causes the different price points in the masks. The fit doesn't change the price point. I just referenced that so earlier so you understood the differences. But the construction and the materials is a big part of the price point difference. 
So for my opinion, I would never recommend anybody wears a plastic mask or a polycarbonate mask. I think in the future, there's definitely a world where plastics could be applied effectively and be used to make a safer mask. The amount of engineering and things they can do with plastics these days are crazy. And also, um, you know, I've seen, I think it's Victory or Wall or maybe both of them as they sort of have a shared corporate history of a really thick polycarbonate mask. Great chance that is safe. When I say don't use a polycarbonate mask, um, it's probably a bit too much of a broad brush statement. Um, but when we think about some of the sort of cheaper polycarbonate shells, those really, in my opinion, aren't strong enough for any adult level hockey player. Those really are probably, you know, designed for kids learning to play against other kids who can't lift the puck. So this wasn't always the case, you know, in past years, there were some mid price point masks that were plastic. The great news is that all of these now are at least a fiberglass shell. And fiberglass means that there are actually sheets of fibers um, that are rolled out. They are laid up together. There is a form of an epoxy or a resin that holds the layers together. And these uh, very you know, paper thin layers are stacked layer upon layer of each other to make a thick, strong mask. This is always traditionally how masks were made dating back, you know, the great grandfather of the Bauer 960 was the Jerry Wright mask, which then became the iTech um, you know, profile mask, which then became the Bauer 960, always about a hand laid fiberglass shell. I don't believe, or I'm not sure if masks are still um, hand laid as we look at the volumes that they're made at. Um, but again, a fiberglass shell was always what you wanted to hear when you're buying a mask. So it's awesome. You know, at Bauer's 399 price point, you are able to get a full fiberglass shell. When we look at the 960 mask, you are getting a fiberglass shell with carbon mixed in there and smack wrap. So we have basically three materials used to lay up the mask for the 960. Um, and basically, you know, just a solid fiberglass construction or, you know, one sort of material. And I'm, I'm really oversimplifying this as well. So if you happen to work in these industries, please don't shoot me trying to make a video that we can all watch and understand and not hit our heads against the wall, wondering what the hell is TGN saying. Mask on the left is effectively just gonna be the binding material and the fiberglass. The one on the right has been engineered to have three materials working together and working in harmony. So we have that traditional fiberglass uh, we have the carbon in the shell, which is going to reduce some weight versus fiberglass. And it's also probably going to make the mask stiffer. Um, carbon fiber, you know, is a really high end material used in airplanes, race cars, golf shafts, hockey sticks, all these high end things where we can sort of tweak the types of the fibers used, the layups to give us different performance characteristics. And then lastly, we see labeled out on the chin here is smack wrap. So smack wrap is a independent material which Bauer has licensed to use in the 960. And the purpose of the smack wrap is to dampen vibrations inside the shell. So when it comes to construction of the masks, the 940 falls into the performance level category, which is effectively Bauer's second price point range, which includes the 940 and the 950. The 960 falls into Bauer's elite level category or top price point or pro level, which includes the Bauer 960 pictured here, uh, currently the NME VTX, and the NME VTX will be replaced this spring or this summer by the NME 1, which is the mask with the square or diamond shaped holes that Vassy's currently wearing. But all of the masks uh, I just referenced in the elite category and the performance level category all have at least a minimum of a 100% full fiberglass shell. And then there's some nuances after that between the constructions. So this is where we start to get into what causes the different price points in the masks. The fit doesn't change the price point. I just referenced that so earlier so you understood the differences. But the construction and the materials is a big part of the price point difference. So for my opinion, I would never recommend anybody wears a plastic mask or a polycarbonate mask. I think in the future, there's definitely a world where plastics could be applied effectively and be used to make a safer mask. The amount of engineering and things they can do with plastics these days are crazy. And also, um, you know, I've seen, I think it's Victory or Wall or maybe both of them as they sort of have a shared corporate history of a really thick polycarbonate mask. Great chance that is safe. When I say don't use a polycarbonate mask, 
Um, it's probably a bit too much of a broad brush statement, um, but when we think about some of the sort of cheaper polycarbonate shells, those really, in my opinion, aren't strong enough for any adult level hockey player. Those really are probably, you know, designed for kids learning to play against other kids who can't lift the puck. So this wasn't always the case, you know, in past years, there were some mid price point masks that were plastic. The great news is that all of these now are at least a fiberglass shell. And fiberglass means that there are actually sheets of fibers um, that are rolled out, they are laid up together. There's a form of an epoxy or a resin that holds the layers together. And these uh, very you know, paper thin layers are stacked layer upon layer of each other to make a thick, strong mask. This is always traditionally how masks were made dating back, you know, the great grandfather of the Bauer 960 was the Jerry Wright mask, which then became the iTech um, you know, profile mask, which then became the Bauer 960. Always about a hand laid fiberglass shell. I don't believe, or I'm not sure if masks are still um, hand laid as we look at the volumes that they're made at. Um, but again, a fiberglass shell was always what you wanted to hear when you're buying a mask. So it's awesome. You know, at Bauer's 399 price point, you are able to get a full fiberglass shell. When we look at the 960 mask, you are getting a fiberglass shell with carbon mixed in there and smack wrap. So we have basically three materials used to lay up the mask for the 960. Um, and basically, you know, just a solid fiberglass construction or, you know, one sort of material. And I'm, I'm really oversimplifying this as well. So if you happen to work in these industries, please don't shoot me trying to make a video that we can all watch and understand and not hit our heads against the wall, wondering what the hell is TGN saying. Mask on the left is effectively just gonna be the binding material and the fiberglass, the one on the right, has been engineered to have three materials working together and working in harmony. So we have that traditional fiberglass. Uh, we have the carbon in the shell, which is gonna reduce some weight versus fiberglass. And it's also probably gonna make the mask stiffer. Um, carbon fiber, you know, is a really high-end material used in airplanes, race cars, golf shafts, hockey sticks, all these high-end things where we can sort of tweak the types of the fibers used, the layups to give us different performance characteristics. And then lastly, we see labeled out on the chin here is smack wrap. So smack wrap is a independent material which Bauer has licensed to use in the 960. And the purpose of the smack wrap is to dampen vibrations inside the shell. So when we look at the price point differences, you're gonna pay more because it has carbon fiber in it and you're gonna pay more because it has smack wrap in it. Those should also give us better performance characteristics. It's gonna make a lighter weight mask and it's gonna have a mask that dampens vibration better than the 940. So that is, in my opinion, that is the number one thing you are paying for. Question you need to ask yourself, is that worth it for you at your level of hockey or can I afford that? You know, I would never want anybody going broke, you know, buying equipment they couldn't afford. Check out sideline swap, you know, buying masks can be tough. You gotta make sure they're not structurally damaged. If you're a youth player, maybe there's a goalie a year or two older than you that grew out of a product that maybe only used it for a season as you're growing. There's so many opportunities with the internet today. Um, you know, our local youth hockey organization has a Facebook group where people can trade gear. So, so many options to get affordable gear these days. Um, but again, if you're going to a shop, gonna get fitted for them, those are the differences between the 940 and the 960. And when we talk about the performance benefits of adding the carbon fiber, um, the 960 mask is about a quarter pound lighter than the 940 mask. And that is attributed, I would say, to the carbon fiber inside the mask. And if we wanna look at that at a percentage base, Uh, you know, it's going to be about 10, 12% lighter, just trying to do the math in my head. So you are getting, you know, some weight savings. It's not half the weight or anything like that, you know, but a quarter pound off your head, I think throughout the course of a game or a season, it is a lighter mask for sure. And I think most people will probably notice that trying these masks on. So next up in terms of differences are in the liner itself. And again, there's that smack wrap logo um, I was talking about a few seconds ago. So if we just kind of stand up, you know, and take a look at the masks and we just purely talk about the aesthetics and the shapes, the liners look almost identical. Underneath, um, 
you know, both sides here, we can see that there are some, you know, cutouts for airflow. There's some graphics, you know, we've got gray over here, the blue over there, but you know, they both kind of have the cutouts in the same place for the strapping. They all have Bauer's mechanical liner system, which means there's no glue. The mask screws actually hold the liner down. So the liners don't really fall apart over time like the old glue ones. And if you have your mask sent out for a paint or a wrap, it's very easy for uh, the person doing your work to disassemble and reassemble your mask, um, you know, sort of minimizes the work for the painters. So again, just at first blush, they both look, you know, relatively similar. Hard to see here, but there's sort of a, you know, two, two piece foam construction on the chin cup and same with here. But the big difference we notice when we look here is the XRD protection logo there and in the chin cup. So the 940 again, which is masked on the left here, has a full soft foam VN liner, and it also includes some of the IX or 9 foam, which is a carryover from the old NME uh, 9. And then the foam inside the 960 is all uh, pour on XRD. So XRD, if you're not familiar with it, that is an independent third party that creates materials and sells them to many industries for use, the same as the smack wrap. So you are paying in the 960 for a more premium liner, where Bauer is using a proprietary material from Poron XRD brand, which they have had the exclusive license to use inside hockey, versus VN stands for vinyl nitrate, I believe. That is a standard helmet foam that's probably been used in hockey helmets, you know, since the original CCM or one of those Northland helmets. So that's been around forever. It's also commonly seen, I believe it's the same style foam. It's just a different color when it comes in sheets, the classic cream foam, which many NHL goalies actually like over some of the new designer foams, which probably is just as simple as it's what they came up using. So they like to stick with it. So VN isn't necessarily a bad material. It's just not as high end as XRD. And I would imagine if you had drop test data for VN and drop test data for XRD, and when I say drop test, that is when you take a sheet foam, you drop a ball bearing of a known weight from a known height, you drop it down on the sheet foam, and then you create data, and that helps you understand how different foams, uh, it's a way to characterize it and understand how different foams perform side by side next to each other. And there's certain uh, curves that people designing helmets want to see based on the performance characteristics they're going for. I would guess if we compare these side to side in laboratory testing that XRD foam should have better impact absorbing properties than VN foam. And again, being that we're talking about helmet safety, I don't personally have or seen any of this data. Um, I shouldn't say I haven't seen the data. I don't have the data on hand to share with everybody. So just trying to speak, you know, in a very conscientious way so that I'm educating everybody, um, but also not, you know, making claims that, you know, I can't share the data necessarily to back up. But again, XRD is an independent third-party company that is not Bauer. Bauer licenses this, and I guarantee the XRD people have some drop test data that they feel validates that, you know, the XRD foam performs better than the traditional VN foam. Another thing which is gonna change the cost of the material, um, you know, this is multiple pieces fused together. You know, this is a more premium product. This is a one piece molded design with the airflow in it. Um, so that's gonna be a more expensive liner to create as well um, with the tooling versus something that is just flat sheets of foam that are cut. So hopefully that makes sense, but this is gonna be a molded piece. And I believe this started off as a flat piece that was die cut and glued together. So this is gonna be a more premium product as well because I had to create a tool to make the mold to make the foam liner. So these are all things that add up in the designs um, that increase the cost. And the same, we have the XRD in the chin cup here. We don't both, which is actually my favorite feature while we're checking this out of the new Bauer mask. They went with an elastic chin cup. You can see it gives, and both of these masks have it. This to me takes the mass comfort absolutely to the next level. And it also gives the chin cup more range of motion. So I have kind of a short chin um, and it just actually allows the mass to fit way better on my mask or on my face rather. And the same goes for the back plate. You can see this has the XRD in it and the 940 back plate, um, you know, just has some traditional VN foam. So again, same thing, same theme you're gonna hear, you know, throughout most of today's video. 
960 has you know more premium materials more expensive manufacturing processes like the molding or licensed independent third-party materials those are all the things that are going to make the 960 more expensive So hopefully I've done a pretty job, solid job up to this point in time explaining the differences between the 940 and the 960, between the fits, the aesthetic differences, and the construction difference. Both masks are available with a cat eye or a chrome. Uh, the white one is an aftermarket mask. It is a Bauer mask. It's something that you should be able to buy at pretty much any major retailer as well. Got mine at Sports Etc. Uh, ordered it online. So again, you know, this is all, you know, common stuff there as well. So it's really interesting. And I teased this on Instagram a couple weeks ago when I announced that I was going to be giving away the 940 mask. Remember, all you have to do to try and win this is follow this account on YouTube and, you know, just comment below that you want to win the mask. It is in talking with Bauer and, you know, kind of coming up with the idea of giving this mask away, my first thought was, I don't want to give away a mask that's going to hurt anybody. And Bauer was very quick to point out that this is a full fiberglass shell. And so we should trust that the safety is there. But what's really interesting, and I posted this today on at the goal, not on Instagram as well, is that this is the same shell construction as the NME uh, IX or 9. And that mask is one that Freddie Anderson actually wore in the NHL when he was with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And again, posted a game used mask on my account today showed the sticker. So for anybody that says, you know, this second price point mask isn't safe, I would be comfortable saying that this mask can stand up to NHL shooters at the highest level. So I have all the reason in the world to trust Bauer when they tell me that this mask is absolutely safe for them. And one of the reasons, you know, I'd love to do more with helmet safety, not able to do, but I know large OEMs like Bauer, like CCM, and knowing that Warrior also has a player division, I would assume they have all the same safety equipment. So hopefully Warrior's doing this testing as well, but I've had the pleasure of visiting both the CCM site and the Bauer site, which are both, um, one's in Montreal, uh, one's a little bit outside. They have puck cannons. So Bauer actually hooks a whole bunch of sensors up to these masks, shoots a puck from just a few feet away, say maybe three to five feet away, and they shoot it somewhere between 80 and 100 miles an hour, and they make sure that the mask is safe, and all of these sensors take data off the impact, send it back to the computer, and as they're looking to improve the performance of helmets over time, they can take that data and incorporate better, safer designs. So where I'm going with this is, again, there's no independent data, so I have no idea if we put a Bauer mask and a CCM mask and a Pro's Choice mask against a puck cannon. I have no idea what the puck cannon, what the computer would tell us is the safest mask, but I'm comforted knowing that at least Bauer has done that safety testing. And if you're buying a direct to consumer mask that's $500, I have no idea if that company has done the proper safety testing or not. And I'm not saying those are bad masks. I'm saying, I don't know. I'm saying I've been to Blainville. I've seen Bauer shoot pucks at the masks. I've seen the safety test data. And Bauer tells me when it comes to safety that there's no huge safety difference between a 960 and a 940. It really gets into the weight of the product, the construction of the product, the comfort of the product. There are different products. The 960 is 100% more a premium product. It doesn't mean that the 940 is a widow maker uh, like those old bubble iTech masks um, for anybody in the GSBB days. So hopefully I've explained that message very well and hopefully, you know, picked my word choice there carefully because again, I don't want to misconfuse anybody and say that like the 940 is better than the 960 or that you're not getting safety for your money or anything like that. It's more that the 940 is the same construction as the NME IX, which Freddie Anderson wore in the NHL. And so we should take some comfort. And when Bauer tells me that the 940 has been fully safety tested and it's not you know, any substantial drop off or anything from the 960. I have no reason to doubt them when they tell me this. So I think I'm very comfortable saying that if you're on a budget of 400 bucks US, which to be frank, that's not a lot of money to buy a goalie mask. The 940 seems like it could be a great option. And, 
you know, if you're going to see value in the 960, again, I would always buy a pro level mask if I could, you know, but that's up to the consumer at the end of the day. But I was honestly blown away when Bauer told me that, you know, Freddie wore the enemy IX, you know, for the Leafs and I actually have those pictures to prove it as well. So that's pretty crazy. And that should really speak to the volume of what you're getting for $400. It's not the 960. I wouldn't say it's as good as the 960, but it's a lot of bang for your buck. So hopefully this answers the questions. Feel free to throw anything you feel like I missed in this video down below, and I will be happy to loop back and answer that below in the questions. And again, to win the mask, got to follow me, got to comment below and ask for it. This is the Goal Net signing out. Thanks for taking the time to check this out.